Well, hi, Bethesda Church family. Thanks for joining in on this virtual edition of First Word Wednesday. We're trying something a little different. And again, our whole desire is to give you a taste of what's coming up this coming Sunday. We're going to conclude our series entitled, What Would Jesus See When He Looks at Me? But maybe it would be more appropriate if we looked at the text this Sunday and just changed one word, and that would be, how does Jesus see me when he looks at me? How does Jesus see? Our text that we're going to take a look at is Matthew chapter 9, and it's the second half. There's kind of a repeat of what Jesus does. We see it almost the same language in Matthew chapter 4, at the end of Matthew chapter 4. Here it's Matthew chapter 9, and the passage of scripture said this, and Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. And when Jesus saw the crowds, listen to what the scripture said, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed, and they're helpless. And what I want to drill down a little bit is just uh, what's interesting is the narrative of compassion that we see in the Lord Jesus throughout the Gospels, not just here in Matthew chapter 9, but throughout the Gospels. Let me just share a few of them. Jesus has compassion in our pain and suffering. We see that in Matthew 4, 14, 4, for the sick and for the blind in Matthew chapter 20. And then Jesus has a heart of compassion for those who have sorrow. We see the same word in Luke chapter 7. And then Jesus has a special compassion for those who hunger. We see that word, same word, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 32, when Jesus feeds both the 4,000 and then when Jesus feeds the 5,000. Same word that we see in Matthew chapter 9, we see in this narrative of compassion throughout the Gospels. Probably the one that impacted me the most in thinking about the compassion of the Lord Jesus is and specifically, is we see that same word where his innards, his soul is moved to, in such a way that in Matthew, Mark chapter 141, he looks at the leper, all abandoned and totally alone, isolated. Does that sound at all like what's going on in our culture today? People are lonely and they're isolated. Jesus has compassion on them. Well, we're going to wrap up our series, as I mentioned before, and we're going to see that Jesus uses two illustrations. He uses a sheep farming illustration, and then he uses, in a sense, a grain farming illustration. He looks at the crowds, and he calls them sheep without a shepherd, a spiritual condition that Jesus sees, and it breaks his heart. And then he invites you and I into this farming illustration that the harvest is plentiful. It abounds. So pray that the Lord who is harvesting will thrust out workers. That's actually the literal translation. So I'm going to share a lot more on Sunday, and I hope you can join us, whether that's online or on the radio or in person. We are doing our best to follow all the protocols. We're listening to what the governor says. We want you to be safe. So come and worship with us. And Aaron, we're going to sing a great song at the second service. What's, what's the song you're going to just share a little bit? Yeah, um, I actually would normally like to say something about it here, but I'm going to let it speak for itself. We've been singing it for a long time, and it's called Broken Vessels by Hillsong Worship. All these pieces broken and scattered Mercy gathered, mended and whole. Empty handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free. I've been set free. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see it now. I can see the love in your eyes, laying your 
yourself down Raising up the broken to life Think about that song kind of resonating with all of the people that Jesus touched and healed their diseases and every affliction. Can you imagine those people saying, you know, he touched me and he changed my life. Christ certainly has changed my life. I know he's changed Aaron's life. And if you don't know Jesus, uh, he wants to change your life. He wants to come in and fill the hole that's in your heart. So God bless you. Hey, again, we're going to uh, kick off Operation Christmas Child. So I got to slip that in real quick. Operation Christmas Child, second week that we're going to do it. You can pick up boxes at church or throughout the week. God bless you. See you Sunday. See you later.